All right, welcome back to RTOD. Thanks for joining us. Today we're looking at a very special GameCube demo disc from 2001 that only works in your computer. Stay tuned. You know, I don't remember exactly where I got this. Uh, might have been from Electronics Boutique, but I do vividly remember being very excited about this when I got it because, for one, it was the same footprint as the GameCube. After I got this, I kind of put it next to my TV where my GameCube was going to be so I could see the size of it. I thought it was a, a really neat marketing thing. Uh, of course, it doesn't have the handle on the back, and I didn't know about the handle until I got the GameCube. Um, even on the bottom, you have the ports, high-speed serial port one and two. Uh, it looks just like a GameCube would if it was flat. And inside, you have the GameCube mini disc, and it's the exact same size as a real GameCube disc. So it was really great to be introduced to how the GameCube would look and, and kind of feel in your hands to an extent. Um, but looking at it on the outside isn't really the great thing. This loads up on your computer. So let's switch over to my computer and see what is on this CD. And of course, later on, we'll see what happens when we put it inside a GameCube. Well, I can't think of a better way to experience an early 2000 demo disc than to try to recreate an early 2000s computing environment. So I have Netscape 6 and AOL Instant Messenger. I'm going to have a link to one of my previous videos to show you how to use both of these programs uh, on a modern computer to explore the old internet through some really great proxy servers, as well as getting AIM working again. But that's not what this video is about. It's about this demo disc. And in a perfect world, back in the day, it would auto-run, but I can't get that working. Uh, I actually had some troubles getting some old versions of QuickTime to play well with a modern operating system. So we're gonna go straight to the directory and we're gonna hit launch. And this was my first experience to anything close to the GameCube. And uh, as a Nintendo kid, my mind was blown away. I was so excited for the GameCube launch, and so were a lot of my friends. A lot of my friends were Nintendo fanboys, just like me. And we were really interested to see what Nintendo would do with their first uh, dedicated disc-based system. So we're going to get out of this full screen, and we're going to focus directly on the program, and we're going to explore what we have inside this demo disc. All right, so we're greeted with this little spinning wheel, and we really have three categories. We have System, Games, and Connect. We're not going to explore too much in the Kinect because, well, one, the links don't work, but we can go to the Nintendo GameCube Clubs, Nintendo Power, Nintendo Email. It's not going to be not going to be working right now. But what you might like in the Kinect folder is the wallpapers. Uh, I don't actually remember if I used any of these back in the day, uh, but we have what do we have? 800 or 1024 by 768. All right, so bigger than. I'm going to drag this over. So we have, uh, you know, basically a Nintendo background, <laughs> you know. Uh, there's a couple different versions of these. So let's see if we can get back and explore some more. We'll have to move the screen back over. We have, looks like a dark GameCube with some lightning over here. It's actually not too bad. I might even use that on my modern machine. Um, you know, you got to think about it, right? Early 2000s, wallpapers were all the rage. People loved customizing their computer with custom wallpapers. It was just a way of self-expression, right? Uh, then we're going to go to the systems because I'm saving the games part. That's the best for last. So let's look at the system. And this was really great because it kind of gave you an introduction of what the GameCube was about. So we're going to look at the tech specs. I, I remember printing this out back in the day and bringing it into school with the demo, and some of my friends and I, we just kind of drooled over this. Now, looking back, we probably had no idea what a lot of these specs meant back in the day, but it was it was interesting, right? Because before that, it was all about bits, right? The 8-bit war, 16, now we're 64, um, and then when we get to the GameCube and just even PS2, you know, it's really about raw processing power, so that was kind of a, a shift in, in how we thought about 
processing and how games work. Um, just a quick little, you know, paragraph introduction of, you know, what's this GameCube disc? You know, talk about the control. Um, tech specs, we did that one. System overview. Oh, and accessories. So we were introduced to the WaveBird. Of course, we have memory cards. I don't actually remember this SD memory card adapter. I know that there's some um, work uh, on the enthusiast side to get this uh, working again. I don't know if it actually came. I'll have to check that out. I'm not sure if it actually came to market. We have our D terminal out of the digital video cable. Great things are coming with that digital video port for older game cubes. So if you have an older game cube and you didn't shell out big money for some of the good adapters, uh, we're gonna you're gonna see some stuff coming out soon for that. Of course, the uh, Game Boy Advance controller, so you can plug your Game Boy Advance into the GameCube. Uh, and really exciting online capability. You know, we had a 56K modem and a broadband adapter that you can get for your GameCube and play with your friends online. And this was, this was really exciting because early 2000s, online gaming wasn't really a thing, right? I mean, you know, I knew a guy that had a, a Dreamcast that had a modem but never used it. Um, it, it was new. It was it was weird. And you know, looking back, if if you probably went back and asked people in the early two thousands, we might have said that online gaming really wouldn't have caught on because of you know technical limitations. But now it's expected. If games don't have online options, it's almost like, ugh, why am I even wasting my time with that? So let's go back to the main wheel and of course look at the games because this was the most exciting thing about the GameCube. And one of the things I loved about this, uh, this demo disc. So look around here. We got Madden. We got Luigi's Mansion, uh, Extreme G Racing, Wave Race, SSX Tricky. Love that game. Tony Hawk Pro Skater, Star Fox, Smash Brothers Melee, and Star Wars Rogue Squadron, Pikmin, NBA Courtside, Madden, and we're back around now. I was most excited for Rogue Squadron 2. And what I loved so much about this and what we spent so much time watching was the video clips. Now this was, in my opinion, probably one of the first games that looked like a movie. I mean, it the graphics just blew me away at the time. And, and even now, it looks very, very good. It, you see the playback is a little choppy, and I think that's a factor of a old version of QuickTime and accessing this disc on a USB CD-ROM. So combine those, we're just getting some choppy playback. We do have some screenshots from the game itself. And again, look at that. Even today, that looks really good. Um, th this game held up over the years. Oh, yeah, B-Wing over there. That's great. Absolutely great. Let's see what else we have. Uh, where was SSX? Let's look at Pikmin. I, I like Pikmin. I spent a lot of time playing Pikmin. Absolutely love this game. You know, we got we got more more screenshots here. I want to look at SSX Tricky because I love this game. Um, even today, I still play SSX Tricky for the GameCube a lot. I love the love the soundtrack on it. I love the characters. It's just a a really really great game. But you can see how you know this would be a great introduction to somebody who is you know maybe you were on the fence. It's from volume. Maybe you're on the fence about getting a GameCube in the early 2000s. You can actually watch the games, watch the graphic capabilities of this, and have a really good preview in your home of what the GameCube was capable about. And I want to emphasize that because today, if a new game comes out, I go to the publisher's website, I go to YouTube, I watch reviews of the game, I watch demos of the game. This really wasn't a thing in the early 2000s. So being able to have a demo disc, even though not playable, but a disc in your home that you can watch yourself and get really excited and hyped up about the games was just, was huge. I mean, this was new, it was exciting. It was a really great time to, uh, to be a gamer in the early 2000s. Uh, so we'll watch, uh, we'll look at one more and then we'll probably, uh, start to wrap this video up. Uh, Star Fox Adventures, I'll admit, I have this game. I 
really don't play it a whole lot. And even back in the day, I didn't play it a whole lot. Um, no real reason, right? I need to, I need to give this game another chance. Um, I've heard some mixed reviews about it, but, um, you know, we'll give it the old, uh, old college try and check it out. But you can see this is, I mean, even today, right? Madden 2002, that, those graphics aren't horrible, right? I mean, I'd play this today. It's not like real time like we have today, but really, really good. So that's going to pretty much wrap up the software side of this. I just wanted to do a quick little review of this and share it with you. We're actually going to walk over to the GameCube and see what happens when we put this in a GameCube. So stay tuned and we'll plug up the GameCube. All right, so we have the GameCube booted up. I apologize for the handheld camera and well as some of the glare here, but I want to show you real time without any sort of capture software. We have the demo disc inside the GameCube. We'll let it spin up. And of course, no surprise, it's not going to read it. Of course, this was never designed to play inside the GameCube. Well, that's going to wrap this video up. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, let me know what you think down in the comments. Like and subscribe, and as always, tell your friends thank you so much for watching.